And now, podcasting from the sun-scorched desert southwest, weighing in at a combined total of 340 pounds, Brad Winchester, Tyler McDowell Blanket, R. Gimmick Infringement. Welcome, everybody, to the Gimmick Infringement Podcast. I am Brad Winchester, and with me, as always, is my tag team partner, Tyler McDowell Blanket. And Tyler, today you are outnumbered. There are two youpers in the house. How are you doing? There are. (laughs) Absolutely, Brad. I'm doing so well, man. Uh, You are here, right? We're back with a very special guest. We have the one and only Emily Olero Jones from the Female Driven Podcast. Emily, welcome to GI. How are you? Hi, I'm great. Thanks for having me. So excited. It's our it's our honor. Uh, Brad, do you want to share why Emily is here today? We have a very very special episode on deck. <laughs> uh, yeah, we we want to talk we want to talk movies today. This is this is not something that we uh, have talked about too openly on the podcast, but some of our biggest requests have been from people saying, we want more movie talk. We want you to talk movies. We want you to break down film, uh, all of that. And who better to have on with us? Well said. And it's, it's true, Brad, people, we try to be men of the people, right? We try to keep our ears <laughs> to the streets, listen to what our listeners and viewers want. And we've been having these requests for film talk. So we, we had to decide who is the guest that can bring uh, commentary, expertise, passion, and that would be Emily from Female Driven. Emily, before we get into this summer film season, tell us more about the podcast. Well, um, I, I think the title of it probably says a lot about it. So I don't know how much crossover we might have between our listenership, if any, but <laughs> <laughs> you never but, know. Yeah. You and Kristen do amazing work over there. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, our our, our podcast focuses on female driven cinema. So yeah. we kind of have a broad definition of that. You know, female driven stories, female writers, directors, etc. So uh, yeah. Love it. Love it. And certainly in the, the crop of films that we're going to discuss, we definitely have um, some strong female leads, lots oh. of amazing actresses. Happy that, to see it. Yeah, yeah that we're going to see in the theater this summer. So we'll go ahead and, and get into it. Some quick background in terms of how we're going to proceed with this conversation. We have 12 films at the very least that we're going to cover, probably <laughs> more. And we've broken them into four different clusters. So our first cluster includes these three films this is the more family oriented batch we have garfield and by the time this episode drops garfield will be in theaters (laughs) i love garfield so much i love orange cats i love lasagna this is probably my favorite of the group but the other two inside out 2 is released june 14th and finally despicable me 4 be in theaters on July 4th weekend or July 4th and thus the big That's July big 4th one. weekend. That's a big, big, one. big for the box office. Mm-hmm. So Emily, we're going to kick it to you first. Um, these first three films, what are your thoughts? How are you feeling? Where's your excitement level? Was it Garfield? Okay. Garfield, I have a lot of nostalgia for Garfield because I used to watch cartoon. I don't know about, Same. about you guys. Yeah. 100%. 100%. <laughs> I do enjoy orange cats. Um, <laughs> How do you feel about lasagna? I actually don't like lasagna. A controversial real? take. Oh my gosh. I don't like ricotta cheese. I'm sorry. Mm, that's the like, texture, the yes. taste. Yeah, Jess hates it too. Really? I do. I yeah. really enjoy Italian food, but yeah, so for some reason, there's something about lasagna. I just, I don't like, doesn't vibe with me. So, okay. Okay. We're still but good. I, lo- I love that for Garfield. <laughs> I love that for him. As do we. Not for me. (laughs) Fair, fair. And then like um, Inside Out, so cute. I love that movie. It's so sweet. And I'm like, I'm just wondering if the follow up. I don't know. You know, there's always anxiety around like, can they, can they replicate the magic? Like, it scares me. Off mic, we were talking about um, Jordan Peele, so (laughs) and 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 replicating the magic. So I don't know. (laughs) That we were. It's not not an easy task at all. Yeah, and I have only seen the first Despicable Me, so which was very cute, very yeah. fun. I don't know. And, what about you? What about you? Now they're on number four. Well, I want to kick it to Brad. Brad, as the sole dad, yeah, on this episode. Yeah. <laughs> what's your take on on this first cluster? These three. Okay, Garfield. For me, uh, I I don't know how I feel about Garfield. How do the kids today feel about Garfield? Do they even do kids, know who Garfield kids, is? 
Does Jen A know what, who Garfield is? That's that's a, I I don't know if my my daughter would have a clue who Garfield is, uh, outside of maybe the Bill Murray Garfield, but I don't think that I don't know that she's ever seen it. Mm -hmm. Um, for for me, I'm like, oh, cool! I can't wait for that to come out on whatever streaming platform I'm paying for right <laughs> now because I'm probably not going to go catch that live. Inside Out Two scares me. I teach uh psychology and and i will Aww. show inside out on occasion after we've learned stuff and they're all in on the joke when it's like all right going into rem right in the beginning and you see these these memories going down to long-term storage it's like you've seen the process of encoding and you're seeing so it's really cool for me and i don't know that anything is gonna top bing bong so oh, ha having your God. heart ripped right out of your chest with that so i'm a little afraid that they end up making it just not quite live up to what it was. Uh, maybe that's okay. Despicable Me 4, I know Freya is stoked for this. She loves her, some minions and some Gru. Mm -hmm. I'm fine with that. We're missing one on this list, Tyler, and it's kind of a big omission because I believe it opened this weekend. Uh -oh. John Krasinski's If, the imaginary... Oh, I, yeah. They, I haven't seen the reviews. Have or I haven't yet, but it's okay. made it made thirty five million this weekend so far, mm -hmm. and uh, Freya in, in is has been talking about it for a week. She wants to see it so bad, so that is a movie that I think is is gonna end up end up surprising people. It looks really cute. It's probably something that's incredibly sad, but it looks yeah. really cute. Uh, all these movies sort of have the same, like we're gonna crush you, and then bring you back. Uh, that's sort of what what children's movies have have always been, I guess. Those but Pixar sadists. <laughs> yes, yes. Pixar sadists. Yes. Hey, no, that would be a great, that would be a great handle. On it. <laughs> Pixar sadists. It would be a, yeah, it would be a memorable handle. Yeah, but somebody would take Pixar masochist, and then then uh, things would get weird after that. So you got to be careful with that. Maybe you don't need to worry, Brad, because look at Toy Story. Look at how great those three movies were. Yeah. The fourth one, not so much. They yeah. should have just left well enough alone. I think, yeah. but. But so maybe Inside Out 2 will be like really, really good. I think it'll be fine. I think it'll yeah. be fine. But I, I want to see if they're staying, if they're staying with Riley, this mm -hmm. has to be the end of it. If we get yeah. Inside Out 3 in another 10 years, what are we doing? Like Riley gets finally gets a car insurance discount. She has student like, loans. <laughs> yeah. Riley has student too loans. Real. and Too real. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> no. Who's your, who's your provider? Yeah. How about oh you, Tyler? My. Yeah, no, I mean, so my relationship to to these movies is is really interesting because I end up not catching a lot of them. I don't necessarily have a, a younger family member, right, like a younger niece or nephew. I certainly don't have any children at the moment where I'm compelled to to watch them. However, as Emily mentioned earlier, I do have an affinity for Garfield, certainly. Um, <laughs> Inside Out too, yeah, Brad, and, and based on you know, our relationship and, and the context of what you teach, really eager to check this one out. Admittedly, I haven't seen the first, so maybe I need to start there before uh, I'm ready for uh, the the sophomore, uh, you know, June 14th. And then Despicable Me 4, I mean, this is going to be one of the biggest films of the summer. I think it's going to do just ridiculous numbers. Uh, July 4th weekend, Emily, right? Like we said, mm -hmm. that's historically uh, one of the biggest weekends in box office every single year. So I'm here for it. If I were to rank them, though, I don't know that I'm going to flock to see Garfield if it when it goes on streaming. I'd like to to check it out just because he's so cute. And obviously, uh, orange cats are, are a love of mine. But uh, I will really want to see Inside Out, too. That's probably my choice out of this one. I'm really curious. And I heard lots of, of positives about the first. Mm -hmm. Let's get into our second batch. I cannot wait to hear what you both think about this. Uh, these are our action movies this summer. We're going to start with Furiosa, a Mad Max saga. This is out now. It was released May 24th. Some quick background on this. It's set in a post-apocalyptic Australia. The franchise provides audiences with guns, trucks, thrills, and very memorable booms. In 2015, the franchise gave its wasteland a feminist gloss with Fury Road starring Charlize Theron as Imperator Furiosa. That character returns in the latest installment, now played by Anya Taylor-Joy. Credit to the New York Times for that description. Uh, our other two in this group, we have Borderlands, based on the video game, released August 9th. 
I did not realize this is a thing that's hitting theaters. <laughs> so in my research leading up to this episode, I know I you need I to research my Twitter timeline is what you need to research. Yeah, for, retweeting this thing I just, forever. I just be liking Brad's and retweeting Brad's stuff without any context. I'm like, this is just my guy. I'm going to support him. But I need to take time to actually uh, think about what I'm retweeting here. Anyway, Brad, Emily, I discovered this film has a fascinating cast. Kate Blanchett. It's nuts. Jamie Lee Curtis, Jack Black, <laughs> yeah. and a gentleman by the name of Kevin Hart. Oh wow! Are are some of the leads for this film? Uh, so I want to hear your thoughts on that in just a moment. That is released August 9th, so we do have to wait a little bit for that. And then finally, the uh, latest installment for Alien is coming out on August 16th. This I was not aware of. Yes, I didn't know this was happening. lots of slime, lots of goo. And yeah. it's it's going to be the the last one that's released out of this uh, this group of films. So for our action packed trio here, Emily, mm -hmm. what are your thoughts on these three? Obsessed, like uh, I I'm loving it. They're all you know female driven, obsessed with it. Well, I don't know how much Borderlands is, but the fact that Kate Blanchett in it is in it says everything. So <laughs> I hear you're a fan. Yeah, Tyler knows about my love for Kate Blanchett. How I just sent you. I just sent you a meme today about her. <laughs> the Galadriel <laughs> one. <laughs> yes, yes. She's fantastic. I know I know oh she's been a, a topic of conversation for you and Kristen on, oh. on female driven. Yeah. No, I'm obsessed with her. I, I'm obsessed with her. I'm obsessed with, with Charlize Theron. I want to go down a rabbit hole about her because she's been in some really awesome action movies, Miss mm -hmm. Miss Theron. Yes. Um, and remember Monster back in the day? Isn't that the one that, that was, really... That's how she... Yeah, she won her Academy Award for that one. I remember yeah. that um, vividly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean... Yeah, she she did... Before she did Furiosa, like, she had been kind of, like, soft launching an action career. Because yeah. she did um, this movie that didn't do so great... <laughs> Uh, called Eon Flux yep. or Eon Flux, yeah. Eon Flux. Directed by Karen Kusama, who did Jennifer's Body. Um, wow. Yeah, and then um, she's in a movie that it, uh, really kicks ass, Atomic Blonde. And oh yes, yes. Yeah, I wanted to bring that up because the director of that is was the director of the Emily Blunt uh, Ryan Gosling movie that just came out. I think his name is David Leach. Leach yeah. or Leach? The, fall, the, fall, the fall guy. Fall guy, yeah. But he, yeah, he was a, a stunt guy, stunt choreographer. But he made a transition to directing movies. So he did Atomic Blonde, and she's amazing in that. The plot really is a mess, but I don't care. We don't need, we don't need a plot. <laughs> I really don't. I just want to watch. Her, I just want to watch her kick ass. Emily, uh, I'm really excited about these first two. I'm I'm waiting for you to mention <laughs> one that I know Charlize is in, that I really love. Brad knows I love this. Oh God! Well, it's a controversial I was about to... topic on on this uh, podcast. Okay. Well, I was about to mention Old Guard. That wasn't it, was it? Because she was no. in that. She was a brunette with like short hair in that. No, it's okay, my favorite. Show... It's my favorite action franchise. Oh, The Devil's Apprentice. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, damn. incorrect. No. Mm. Yep, I already know what it is. I know it is Fast and Furious. You know it, Emily. Yeah. Come on now. Wasn't she's she in it? She's awesome she was, in that. She was in it for like five minutes, right? It was a great five minutes. <laughs> like it like was, Steven like, Seagal in uh, what is that movie? Patriot. It was a Patriot Games. Oh my God. Where he's like killed in the first okay. five minutes of that movie. Spoiler. I think Charlize she's is like, in it for longer than five minutes. 30 year old she's, movie. She, she's like a lady kingpin. She shows up. I think she's like, I'll give you one day of shooting. That's it. And they paid her like $15 million. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and they put a wig on her or because she had braids, didn't she? Or so she had a crazy hair style in that movie. <sighs> Yeah, I don't care. She can show she up. She delivered. And... She delivered. Yeah, I, I knew. I knew you were gonna give her her flowers. For I'm that obsessed one, so I'm with happy. her. No, I love her so much. She's great. Um, yeah. So I just wanted to like go down her little action movie rabbit hole, but I don't know what she's like working on currently. Um, don't know. But yeah, and then, um, Kate Blanchett. She really has the range because you know she did. She's done prestige dramas and weird like experimental avant garde stuff when she played Bob Dylan. And then she does, then she'll do a huge blockbuster. Like she'll, she'll do a Marvel movie where she was, what was it? Hella goddess of death or something. Yep. Like that meme Before. where it's like, get, yeah, the meme that's like, get you a girl who can do both. And it's her as Hella and then Galadriel. <laughs> I love that. I love her so much. 
so so good brad brad how are you feeling what, what what's the vibe check here all right can i can i sell you on any alien uh romulus here i i just watched uh, uh covenant for the first time a, a couple weeks back how was that and it happened um <laughs> It was fine, I guess. It's a, it's it's sort of like I feel like it's like pizza, you know. Even a crappy pizza, it's still pizza. It's still good. So, uh, an alien movie, I kind of feel the same way. A bad alien movie. Everybody's most beloved, I feel like universally beloved alien movie in the franchise. The first is, one is the second one. Aliens. Aliens, and I'm like, it's some of the worst acting ever put on film um in it's that iconic. movie it's iconic though it's so but good. it's iconic game over man game over bill paxton rest in James peace. cameron loves him because he put him in titanic exactly. and i think he was in terminator doesn't he get killed he was yeah. yeah he had like a mohawk or a spiky yep. hair love yeah. bill paxton oh my god speaking yeah. of bill paxton twister twisters yep can't wait Ooh. to talk about that later no, we're gonna, no we're gonna talk about that so the alien romulus thing yeah. I, i'm excited to see it on video Furiosa, I I gotta go. I just I'm don't so know excited, when. I'm so excited. Yeah. I have I have no. We're leaving May 25th. To, to for it open? A week. That's a yeah, it opens it on op the 24th. I think, right? Yeah, no that's chance right. that I'm gonna be able to go on that yeah. day. And, and that's one of those a, that you have to see in the theater. Like some of these, some of these we can wait for streaming, Brad. Others. We get to Fury it. Road is one of screen. one of my favorite cinematic experiences ever. That oh, movie yeah. was just adrenaline. It's so um, good. Oh, it's so I good. loved it when it was like sweeping at the Oscars too. It was so yes. funny. <laughs> and then like the theme song would come on. I'm like, oh my God, this is like shaking up the establishment. So what a good. gorgeous movie too. What a beautiful movie. Oh, oh I wish she, I wish Charlize had been nominated for that. Mm -hmm. They just, they just don't want to. She was the best thing in that movie. She was so good. She, that was her story. I don't think mm -hmm. that's a hot take, but. No, it was her story. Yeah, it, it's it's her story. Yeah, and yeah. then and then we waited, uh, what, 10 years, almost 10 years to, to have the prequel happen. I know. I was bummed. I was like, you know, no shade on you, Taylor Joy. I like her a lot. But I was like, I wanted Charlize to do another one. <laughs> like, I wanted to see her. Like, where is she at now? Yeah. I don't know. Well, George, I also want George Miller to hurry it up here. Like, let's oh, yeah. start cranking out some more movies or at least some more scripts here. You're not getting younger. Um, <laughs> I, I'm i being selfish here. I, yeah. I need it before he goes because someone's going to ruin it. Um, Borderlands. Okay. I <laughs> love me some Borderlands. I love the game franchise. I don't know if we're getting a handsome Jack. It doesn't sound like it. I'm sure it'll be a tease at the end. But I love the Borderlands franchise. Kate Blanchett it is going to be the Firehawk. Um, Jamie Lee Curtis is uh, is going to be this. If you don't know the franchise, she's sort of this mad scientist person. Kevin Hart is playing Roland. Doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Truly, remarkably strange casting. Uh, Roland is this giant guy who is specifically taller than everybody. And they found the shortest actor they could I find. I was going to ask, by giant, what do we mean? Because I'd be seeing the, these Kevin Hart videos of him in the gym. <gasps> he's doing pull-ups and he has a trainer. Oh, he's jacked. He's yeah. got his physique Isn't he yeah. just like, he's like 5'2", right? Or something. He's 5'6", I think. He's just what? Like, Kevin shorter. Hart? Yeah, he's oh, not that. He's not that. I, I was going to split the difference. I was going to say 5'4". Five, five five, Wait, five, I want to four. Be... Uh-oh. Man down. <laughs> <laughs> You Do we keep stamp it? In, no, well, it? yeah, well, this he's five two. Five two. <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm putting this. I'm putting this in. <laughs> okay. The Borderlands dog. Emily, Emily got up, got up out of here. Emily exit. We'll call it seventeen fifty five. Yeah, I'm gonna try to keep this in there. Do you do you think she do you think she left because we made her so mad? We'll see. No, not me. Not me getting cut off. Look, trying to Google Kevin Hart's height. <laughs> Five two. You were right. Oh wow! See, yeah. What happened? I you were like, hold on, I'm gonna look, and then gone. <laughs> this is, this is of it. That timing was funny. Was yeah, it was so funny. good. Uh, what time do you want to pick it back up? Uh, yeah. Uh, eight, ni 1905. Okay. Cool. So Kevin Hart is in fact five foot two. Uh, Emily left for a second to, to make sure <laughs> we had our, our facts straight. 
the so the I, I don't really understand all of the casting. Um, Ariana Greenblatt's in it playing Ty to Tina. That's going to actually be great. And then Jack Black is playing Claptrap, which I don't understand whatsoever. I don't understand it at all. He's going to be great. Claptrap is voice acted. I, I'll never understand the let's get somebody else to do what somebody's already done excellently. Just different excellently. I, I don't know. I never understood that when it's uh, nobody can see their face anyway. But I'm kind of fine with it. I want to see what his interpretation is. I just hope it's not too Jack Black. Um because I love this franchise, but I am pretty good at having an open mind going into it and going, I don't need it to be a perfect interpretation. I can watch the halo series just fine. Um, I have no problem watching it. Season one was a bit of a grind, but season two was pretty good. Uh, Cause I don't feel like it betrayed any of my pre previous knowledge. Cause I went, I don't care. I just want to be entertained, entertain me. Uh, this is going to be, Really interesting to see if it's any good. Tyler, they shot this, and Emily, I don't know if you know this, but they shot this in 2021. Oh, wow. It's been it's been done for a while, but they weren't ready to release it because of the pandemic. And then just some stuff happened, and now they're finally releasing it. So this is we're essentially getting a three-year-old film. It's gonna be really interesting to see uh what it looks like after all that time. Wow, that's that's fantastic. Our next group, this is the <laughs> It was good until it wasn't section. We have some disaster, disasters happening. We have some slashing happening. Here are the next three. A Quiet Place Day One comes out on June 28th, of course, starring the magnificent Queen Lupita and others, but Lupita's the lead. Love that for her. Love that for us. Yes. N next, we have Maxine, which comes out July 5th. Some oh quick boy. background. Yeah, <laughs> some quick background for this. Can't wait for Emily's thoughts. It's an American slasher from A24, directed by Ty West. Yeah. After surviving a massacre in Texas, Maxine, our protagonist, of course, continues to pursue her dreams of becoming a famous actress, all while evading the Night Stalker in 1985 Los Angeles. Finally, the aforementioned Twisters is back. All the way from 1996, Yay! we have it reprised here. That is dropping on July 19th. Emily, got to kick it to you first. How are you feeling about these three? Well, we were talking about tornadoes off mic. <laughs> um, so I'm like really excited to see Twisters. Are you really? Yeah. I didn't know how you both would feel about this one. <laughs> if it was, if if it was a, we'll wait to see it on streaming or no, no. I have I'm gonna to pay it. to see this. Theaters. No, have to see really? it. Really? Day didn't one. Expect this from you too. I was just watching like the the original was on TV when I was in Palm Springs, and I we sat and like watched a lot of it. What what a cast! Helen Hunt, and then again Bill Paxton. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 90s King Bill Paxton. Um, 90s King. It's such what a good, era. it's so goofy, fun. Goofy, drug-addled Philip Seymour Hoffman before becoming like this household Oscar-winning name. Before That's he cool. played Capote, yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that was what, that would have been before Talented Mr. Ripley, too. Yeah, yeah. he was just and like, dusty Todd, from Mister. Yeah, Todd Field was in that yes. movie. Auteur director Todd Field. Mm. Um, yeah, that's a crazy cast. Yeah, it's wild. And Tyler, I think you messaged me or I, were we talking on Slack after I did um, on our podcast, we did Titanic, but I was just talking with with uh, my my co-host about uh, movie stars in the 90s. And yes, they just look different. Like, the, heart, look, the heart throbs of the 90s. I they think look you more call, like real people. Yeah, <laughs> I think you call Leo a shrimp. Leo. Yeah, no, he was featherweight featherweight. Yeah. Leo. He was yeah. in, in Titanic. He really, mm -hmm. he looks like Timmy Chalamet, little Timmy. You did. That was the comp. You Ooh, that is a great comp. That mm -hmm. was the comp you made. Oh, that's like, so the, spot on. But even like, like guys just look wow. kind of normal. Like Bill Paxton could lead a movie in 1996. Like he would never today. It's Glenn Powell now. Look at him. He's like a, an Adonis, you know, like figure. That's people just, standard now, right? Yeah, people just look different. I don't know. <laughs> I kind of miss it. I don't know. I kind of miss it. It's a like, then they're like attainably attractive, you know, in the nineties, and then right, yeah. which is nice know. to to see. Because they look they, more like people, yeah. like every yeah. every man, every woman, like yeah. all of right. those, right? 
And it, it, in the nineties, it felt like the pretty people, the, the pretty men specifically were always the antagonists. Oh, I can like never say his last like, name. Uh, well, Twister, right? Carrie. Oh, uh, Carrie Elwes. Yes. Elwes. Yeah. Carrie Elwes. That's that's and why I avoided it because I could never say the last name. Right? Billy, Billy Zane in Titanic. Billy Zane in Titanic. He was yes. so femme and like so pretty and yes. his eyebrows and his wig and everything. I mean, Leo was too, but in a different way. So. Yeah. I don't know. Wow. Wow. It's what just, do we it's a conversation starter? <laughs> it absolutely is. What do we think about A Quiet Place Day One? I recall when this this film first came out, not this film, but A Quiet Place first started, how much fanfare it got. And, and people in mm -hmm. my orbit were just were loving it. And I, and I enjoyed it too. I thought it was really well done. Uh this latest installment with Lupita. Yay, yay or nay, streaming theater. How we feel? I I haven't seen I only saw the first one. And I didn't see it in theaters, so I don't mm. feel compelled to see it in theaters. If it gets like great reviews, maybe I will. Yeah, you know Lupita's going to deliver. That that's oh yeah, without question. Uh, speaking of her, us yeah, I'm us sure like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Fantastic mm -hmm. performance, Brad. What say you? A quiet place? No, I'm good. Maybe. You're good. <laughs> I'm good. Like if it comes out and it's like this is the greatest thing I've ever seen, I'll stream. Right, it. right. It's but I'm yeah. good. I have, I have no interest in seeing this. Such an interesting yeah. concept. And how about I love Lupita though? Like, oh, of course, you, you know this, but the prerequisite to be on the show, yes, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> how about the film that we we sandwiched in between these two? Maxine, this is the one out of oh our God. entire list, frankly, that I'm most intrigued the weirdest. by. <laughs> the, the, weirdest. Weirdest. the weirdest Emily says, I watched the trailer earlier today. And obviously, A24 has a really strong history of producing some some very artful, some very uh, great projects. I think of Moonlight being one of my first mm -hmm. introductions into A24. And I've been a fan ever since. So Maxine, Emily, we talk about female driven art. Maxine is certainly the case here. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about about this very unique Oh, my slasher? God. Oh my god. I I just have a feeling it, it is going to be so outrageously gory. I just know cuz I mean, have you seen Pearl and I, I, I I've seen clips. I, I won't watch it. Oh, no. I, and then Keep oh god, going. what was the first one in this trilogy? What was the first one she was in? Um like, was it Midsummer? No, no. No, no, that was way too long ago. No, that's uh Florence. Yeah, too. yeah. Um, yeah. I never what saw was that. The, what yeah, was that was first? Florence. I read the spoilers though. Damn, what was the first one in the Ty West Mia Goth universe? It was it was so creepy. It was in the 70s. And I think, let me see. Let me see. Mia Goth. I won't Google on my computer this time. <laughs> <laughs> this is my introduction to Ty West, by the way. X. I, I'm not it was called X. Oh right. X. Right. Mm -hmm. He's gnarly. Just gnarly. Uh but I, I really, I, I admire Mia Goth a lot. She's a scream queen. She does weird stuff. Like she, um, did you see the Suspiria remake? No. Okay. Wild. Yeah. 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 And Infinity Pool. Yeah. She's just, she just, she is very, um, I don't know. can't take your eyes off of her kind of. Wow. A, I saw a Night Swim on Peacock. Does that count for anything? It was Mia Goth. With the, 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 no, she was. This is just oh. a random answer by me with the killer pool. Oh my god! I listened Blumhouse. to a review of that. That cracked me up. I did listen to a review of that. Okay, like, don't rush to see it. I don't think Brad's seen it. Don't <laughs> rush to see it. But I think that's been the the most recent horror. It's not a slasher by any means, but that's been the most recent horror film that I've seen. Yeah, gnarly stuff. I'm sure Maxine is going to exceed everyone's like gnarly expectations. I'm afraid to see it in theater because I'm like going to get too grossed out. I just. Yeah. That would be one to stream and be like, I can't hand like I need to step away for a second. <laughs> I feel similarly. I want to see this just because the yeah. the the Night Stalker is an interesting storyline. I think to have it take place in, but I also horror movies I can't really watch. I, I get do, scared. I got. I, get... I got to. For me, it's not. I get scared. It's I have married, and I, they get scared, and uh, and I have six year old, and absolutely not. So it's. It, it's just so hard to figure out when to do it because I don't really want to watch it on my own, but no. I know I'm going to have to. And then I'm left with this decision to make. Um, like if it's something I was able to convince Jess to go to violent, violent night with me, which oh was goodness. absolutely worth it. I freaking love that movie I so much. This, I remember this vividly. 
uh, we went to Deadpool together uh, as a Valentine's date before we had Freya. Uh, all all of those things. But since then, it's like, well, we have a kid in the house. I don't want her walking in. Like, I feel bad because I'm playing Uncharted in the living room and I'm like shooting <laughs> pirates. And she'll be like, oh, shoot him again. And it's like, oh, should you be seeing this right now? I don't know. Cool. He got blown up with that grenade. And I'm like, I don't really want a gory movie. So it's, <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely not going to see this in theaters. I'm definitely going to make it a point to see it at some point. It's just probably not right. at night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but Twisters. Oh, so fun. Twisters. It's, it's, I want to go opening weekend. I'll go yeah. opening night. I will bring a small child with me and traumatize yeah. her forever. I want it to become a meteorologist because of the original. No kidding. Mm -hmm. See, I, I was going to ask how how much of of both your current excitement old, is due to the nostalgia of the original. Yeah, that's, I a, think huge, that's, that's a, a huge part of this, right? Millennial nostalgia. Yes, yeah. I think. Okay. Um, because do you, I do saw this. Do we get the cow? I'm sure they that's will. That's the question, right? They'll do, to, they'll right? do homage to the cow at least. Yeah. They'll at least reference it. Uh, but um, I think that movie came out in 1996. I want to say yep. 1996. So I, I would have been like six. Yeah. Um, because my mom took us and I, and I was traumatized. <laughs> we were in, it was a packed theater and like we were sitting in the back. Uh, um, but yeah, I, I was very scared of that movie and like in seeing it just on TV recently, I was like, Oh, this is just like silly and fun. Right. How many but theaters are in Escanaba? One. Is there, is there, is the there Willow Creek Cinema two? 8. Willow Creek next to the yeah, shop go, which I guess is the shop go is gone. Yeah. Poor yeah, it's unfortunate. Well. Yeah. R.I.P. <laughs> <laughs> Brad, you were you're, saying you're you wanted to be a, a meteorologist because of this. Yes, I wanted to go. I wanted to go into meteorology. I bailed on that when I found out how much math was involved, but I really wanted to do it. Oh, I'm not mad at you. I'm not mad at you for that. Just there is. I didn't oh, know there was an unbelievable amount of math. Yeah, oh. you're you're analyzing models and and doing calculations, do predictions. No thanks. It's like. We're, you know, like that if there's a 10% chance of rain, well, that's got to come oh. from somewhere. Oh, oh, no. So yeah, that's, they be it, there's a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I never do, about being that. a meteorologist on TV wasn't something I, I was interested in. I wanted to study the weather because seeing them go like, no, this will save lives. I was like, we could save lives. And, and that to, was what I thought of. Yeah. You didn't want to be a storm chaser though. You wanted to be. Oh, a hundred percent. I wanted to be a storm oh. chaser. Okay. Okay. I like we would we would get in our cars in high school and be like, hey, there's a storm coming. You want to go find it? And we would drive toward it. And we got caught in a hail storm. Me and my friend Mike one time. And we were like, all right, this is uh, we're done. And we're done. It was, it was <laughs> nasty because hail's not messing around up there. Um, it's yeah. it's uh, yeah, it was a whole thing. I think the homages uh, in the in the posters, in the T in, in the I guess they're trailers now. I, th I think it's been great. I'm a little scared that it's just a rehash with no thread between the two and all they did was put an s at the end of the movie because that's it looks very similar yeah um like almost identical which i don't know that we need that so hopefully there's a oh yeah my dad was a storm chaser and we find out oh that was bill paxton um and maybe there's something there to connect them otherwise yeah. i that just feels kind of like a gross money grab where at least the people that are there for the nostalgia Hopefully we can get that as a, a as a connecting point because I would I would be really happy with that. I could see Bill Paxton being Glenn Powell's dad, mm -hmm. and Helen Hunt being his mom. Wait, yeah. actually, no, they might. No, I think he's what like thirty five, and Helen Hunt's probably like sixty ish or something. Maybe they yeah, could be. Was, I mean, she was in her thirties in nineteen ninety six, so it would mm -hmm. it would track. Yeah, it would track. Um, so how how long ago was nineteen ninety six? Oh God! Thirty was that thirty-four years? Wait, wait, no, no. Um, my math is real wrong there. No, not even. It's like tw twenty-eight. Yeah, it would have been. Yeah, it must be thirty. Yeah, because so maybe this takes place in the future. Twenty-eight years ago, right? Mm -hmm. But also, right. the CW has forty-year-olds playing high school students, so like, I think we can suspend that. Really that. throws me off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we were talking about that before the recording as well, right? The the, yeah. the, the, the true ages of. Of actors and, CW, and actresses versus yeah, yeah, CW, CW and like Lifetime movies and yeah, whatever I, Freeform is. Pretty, yeah. pretty Little Liars. You're All like, American. This is year old. The senior is my age and this is my 10th year teaching. Yes. 30 yeah. year old um, high schoolers. Yeah. 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 Wild. Are you ready to elevate your fantasy sports experience? 
With prize picks, you can win up to 100 times your money. Imagine turning a $10 entry into a whopping $1,000. And with the NBA playoffs in full swing, there's no better time to get in on the action. But that's not all. Prize Picks is all about variety and excitement. Whether you're a fan of basketball, hockey, or even League of Legends, Prize Picks has you covered. You can mix and match your picks across sports, choosing stars like LeBron, Caitlin Clark, Connor McDavid, and Jude Bellingham all in one entry. It's the ultimate fantasy sports playground. And for those who love a quick win, Prize Picks is the way to go. You can make your picks and submit your entry in less than 60 seconds. Plus, with quick withdrawals and an enormous selection of players and stat types, it's no wonder Prize Picks is the go to app for fantasy sports. So, what are you waiting for? Download the Prize Picks app today and use promo code CLNS for a first deposit match of up to $100. That's right. Prize Picks will match your deposit, giving you more to play with. Remember, with Prize Picks, it's as simple as picking more or picking less. So let's get those entries in and watch the winnings roll in. It's that easy. Don't forget to use promo code CLNS to get your deposit match. Let's play and win together with prize picks. Well, I think it's time we move into our final group. These are simply the blockbusters, the ones you've been waiting for our thoughts on. First, June 7th, Bad Boys Ride or Die. For whatever reason, Emily Brad, I thought there were at least maybe six or seven bad boy films up to yeah. this point. I was completely yeah. wrong. This is only the fourth film in the franchise. Of course, Mike Lowry and Marcus Burnett are back. Um, Martin Lawrence, Will Smith. Martin Lawrence is actually on tour this summer. He is making a stop in Chandler, Arizona, wow. believe it or not, which feels very random that he would be in pull up in Chandler. But uh, alas, he is he is hitting the road. The other two, good for him. I know Brad. Go good, good for good for Martin. Absolutely, I know Brad is excited for this. He probably has it marked on his calendar. July twenty sixth, the release of Deadpool and Wolverine, and then <laughs> finally, this also is high on my list. I'm not sure if I'm committing to seeing it in theaters, but I want I want Emily's take on this in a moment. <laughs> M Night Shyamalan, Trap, a serial killer dubbed The Butcher. Joins his daughter at a pop concert, but he realizes the concert is a trap set up by the police to catch him. You've probably seen the trailer by now. If you haven't, check it out. Uh, very much M. Night, very polarizing already, oh, man. but it is coming <laughs> out this summer. Emily, I'm going to pass it to you. Where would you like to start? Oh, God. <laughs> I mean... I don't know. I could talk about M. Night Shyamalan for a while. <laughs> Speaking of filmmakers who peaked at the beginning. Uh... <laughs> Look at... Yeah. Cl clip that. Yeah. Fighting wow. words. I know. I know. I know. No, 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 no. no. Please, no. please. We Truth, are, we honesty, are ready. The American way. Yeah. I think we got to start there, Emily. We, yeah, we, no. We cause... have not gotten your M. Night take until now. Yeah. Well, because I, I mean, The Sixth Sense is his best movie and it was mm. his first feature. I don't know if he had done like an indie year before that or. But that I think that's his best film, and it was his first one. And then I know some people really love um, uh, Signs. They love Signs. Signs. I know people who love The Village, but like he had some real doozies that were just really bad. Like, what did you think of Split? Mm, and the subsequent Glass. Yeah. Glass was bad. Yeah, I don't know. Not not too positive, but like. The funniest ones were the the happening where the wind is the bad. Oh, guy. it's so bad. That movie is so bad. Yeah, it's Abstract. really bad. Really bad. And then the one the one with um Will Smith and Jaden. Oh, uh, the air airbender? No. no, 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 no. After Earth. After Earth. Yeah, so bad. After what, Earth what, is terrible. What don't even think? bring up the last airbender, Tyler. How dare you? <laughs> That's outrageous. <laughs> they even changed the name. Oh. I, I promise. Ong? Was, Who's Ong? It was accidental. Mm -mm. No. Yeah. Emily, I'm did, still did, mad about did, it. <laughs> Brad, Brad has feelings. Uh, mm -hmm. Emily, did you see that one? I forget the name of it. I saw this in theaters with my mom, actually. Oh? The, the the movie where uh, a few people get stuck on like a stranded yeah, island and then they start old. aging. Old, yeah. yeah. Old. Thank you so much. Yeah. What do you like think of old? He's decent. I don't know. He, he was unique. Yeah. He's trying to return to form a little bit. And then he yeah, had that I wasn't one mad at it. That one with like Dave Bautista. Yes, I saw that in the theater Cab as well. Cabin in the Woods is that? Mm -hmm. Or not Cabin in the Woods? Mm -hmm. That's uh, Joss Whedon. 
knock at the door yeah. or knock at the cabin. Knock at the cabin, Brad. I feel yeah. like he's improving. Like he's getting, but I don't know if he'll ever ascend back to like where he started. You don't think Trap is going to be that one? I don't know. I don't have a ton of confidence. I'm not sure. I just like he did that one really weird one that people were like, oh, this is who we're, we've been missing, where it was like those really scary grandparents. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I still like, think about, I still think about that moment when yeah. the kids are on the phone with their mom. I think it's like yeah. a, a FaceTime, yeah. and the and the mom goes, "Wait, who are those people?" <laughs> and then it's, "Oh snap, those yeah. are my grandparents." So scary. Yeah. <sighs> well done. Yeah. There. Well done there. Yeah, I I don't know. I would like it to be good. Like, <laughs> of course. I just those are. I'm like, I'll see what the the critics say first, and then maybe check it sure. out. Check but. that Rotten Tomato score. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. Brad. Brad, let's pass it to you for trap. Where, where's your Where's your M M night meter right now? I don't have one. I got. I cut it off after the weird fairy tale movie. It's, it's in not, the basement. It's not back. Oh, that one. What was that one called? The Paul Giamatti yeah. one. Yeah, Bryce Dallas Howard. What was that movie? That was really bad. Yeah, there were some funny moments in it, like the guy that only worked out half his body. Uh, and like a jacked left arm, but that's oh my it. God. Yeah. Was, that, was it called like Lady of the Lake? Yeah, or Lady something? of the Water. Yeah. Lady, Lady of the in Water. Lady yes. in the Water, maybe. Something. Um, that, yeah. Yeah. She like lived in the pool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, woof. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, so I, I really like signs. Um, mm-hmm. I, 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 you know, I, it's got its problems, but maybe it's because of my, my fond memories of the Willow Creek cinema eight hearing the, (laughs) hearing the alien run on the roof from behind me from one side of the theater to the other. And then the coal shoot scene, there's so many iconic moments, Yeah. but I, I I used to show it to my students when I taught drama and film as literature. And I always liked watching them right at the end and like the height of, of suspense and action where it, shoots to a flashback it gets really quiet oh. <laughs> <laughs> like it just rips you away and you're like come on uh, Tension, yeah, right I love tension, that. yeah, yeah I, you know. I guess that's what that is um but i i do i do like that film uh the village and light but mm-hmm. i didn't love it i it's kind of eh, for me uh yeah. but the music is so beautiful that i almost don't care james newton howard crushed it with that with that score um and then you have everything after that where they got progressively worse. And then you're mm-hmm. like, oh, he's going to get his moment here. They're giving him Avatar, The Last Airbender, which mm-hmm. is the only animated thing to ever want to win a Peabody Award for character development. And then poop all over it and change names and stuff. Like, just awful. And, and, like, and like whitewash it. <laughs> oh, so bad. They made all the villains, like all the villains were Indian from the Fire Nation, yeah. I think. Yeah. And it's just like, what do you have to tell, doing? right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like great, really good cast. Like I liked the cast. I thought when I saw the cast, it was like, Oh, this, this might actually be good. And I was just wrong. Um, <laughs> so my, my meter for M night on trap is I'm not doing that. I Netflix Hulu plus whatever. Well, I, I don't know. I'm good. As Shania, as Shania Twain said, it's only up from here. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Prophetic words from Shania. Right, Shania? <laughs> I don't know. I just watched Glass, so you're you're you might oh, be right. okay. I wanted the yeah, end of I really wanted the end of Unbreakable, and I was like, what a dumb ending. You really couldn't <laughs> Bruce Willis really couldn't have just done a push up there. Um, that's okay. Right. Okay. Right. I, so I, for, I was confused. For the final two in this one, bad boys. I don't know either of your relationships to to this franchise. My cousin was actually in this franchise. He played oh Ma- one of Martin Lawrence's sons, or maybe his only son. I think in the first or the second, many oh many God, really? many years ago. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to shout out to Scott, my cousin. He's in it. So obviously, I have an affinity to it. I'm going to see this in the theaters. I I know I will. I won't even be be iffy on it. It's it's going to happen. Um, so I'm going to see it. I don't know about you two. What do we think? Will Smith, Martin Lawrence, they're back. Fighting really the bad have, guys. I don't really have a relationship with the franchise. So I do know so that's that a Mike, no for, that's a no for probably Emily. not. I do right. know that Michael Bay directed. Was it the second one or the first one? Oh, uh, I think all of them. Oh, really? Pretty okay. sure it was all of them, was it not? And, was it was it Bay or Bruckheimer? I thought he, no, it wasn't Bruckheimer. The was Michael Bay universe, yeah. The Michael Bay universe. Yeah. Uh, Michael Bay slow motion stuff blowing up and hitting the camera. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah. it is a trope. (laughs) 
Uh, hey, I know he what? he did Bad Boys for Life. Yeah. He did Bad Boys. Uh, he did all of them. No kidding. Yeah. Well, what's the last movie Will Smith did? He's he's taken a little bit of a hiatus, huh? Yeah. What was the last one he did? Bad, bad <sighs> Boys for Life. I'm just thinking about like the Fresh Prince like reunion. They they yeah. had streaming, but that's not not a movie at all. <laughs> or was it when he did movie. Ang Lee, who I love so much, but he's yeah. had some like flops. <laughs> And this was one of them. He did Gemini Man with Ang Lee. Yes. Um, yeah. Um, well, it might have been the last big one. Um, but right. And then ever since the Chris Rock slap, his career has just oh, been boy. A very interesting. Well, position. and then the weird stuff with Jada Pinkett Smith. And oh. it's just like there's just Red so much going talk. on. It's yes. I'm trying to figure it out right now what mm. his last thing was. With the mm. he was on a run there. We had Hitch. What what yeah. one of my favorites? Yeah. What else? He was in he was in that movie with Barbie, Margot Robbie. Oh, I was, I was like Charlize. No, <laughs> she's done so much more. I don't know why I couldn't think. Yeah, Margot, Margot Robbie. Yeah, that I really enjoyed. I forgot. I do know which one you're talking about, yeah, but I'm like, of course, oh. of course. There's the pursuit of happiness. What set? I think oh, seven no. pounds. No, 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 no. It was, no. it was that really bad. Oh my god, what was it? Suicide Squad. So bad. Oh, bad. oh, that first one's dreadful. Bad. Speaking of Margot. Yeah, Margot Robbie and Will Smith. Oh, they were boy. union. Oh, boy. She was great in it. I thought he was really good in it. As I, he made a lot of sense for that character. That movie was just bad. Viola Davis was in that movie. The <laughs> Viola Davis. And then the she queen. was, and then she was in the Suicide Squad, which was infinitely better and so much weirder. Yeah, that one was good. I really yeah. liked that. that one was and great. Then yeah. I really liked the Harley Quinn, the mm -hmm. Harley Quinn movie. It's great. The the Emancipation of Harley Quinn. Birds yes. of Prey. Yeah. Birds of I thought Prey. that was great. The yes. cocaine scene had me had me cackling. Um, <laughs> just just amazing. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was great. Yeah. Huge Bre female cast. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And Ewan McGregor, Ewan McGregor as a now. as a villain was was I didn't see that coming as Black Mask, but that was interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was a good one. I mean, I'm ready yeah. for another one. I'm yeah. Ready for another one. <laughs> how how about this last one on our list? And and maybe Brad, I don't know if can can you wait if Emily goes first? I know you've been yearning <laughs> to discuss Deadpool and Wolverine. Oh uh, let's go. Let's go, Emily, and then we'll definitely hear from Brad. Mm -hmm. Emily, I don't know. I'm I'm not like a super fan, so I mean, I would. That's where I, I don't mean. know if I'll go to theaters to see it, but I. Speaking of David Leach earlier, he directed, I think, the second one, Dead, Deadpool Two. I believe he did. Um, I think I'm like a little bit tired of Ryan Reynolds, so. I, maybe I have been for some time, actually, because he just has this isn't, a, this isn't a new discovery. Same character. Same shtick. I'm just like, yeah. eh. it's like the smarmy thing. I'm just like, no, you've been doing this for 20 years. I think I'm I think I'm out. <laughs> he, has, he has been in the zeitgeist for a while. Mm, but and I just get so many ads for Mint Mobile. I'm just so tired of it. <laughs> just like, would need more money. And then he had his own like whiskey or something. I'm like, dude, a just is like it aviator. Yeah, I can't, then, I can't remember. It's a gym, and, like, and then like promoted it in his own movie, the one that bad one with Gal Gadot and The Rock, and he had like his oh. like alcohol in it. I was like, dude, really? Ne Netflix. Yeah, it was, was it red, red, red eye? That was bad. Red Notice. Mm. Red Notice. Oh, that movie came out already. Oh. I was like, <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm a little, I'm, sa I've soured on him. I don't know. So probably not. Okay, I don't know. What about you, Brad? I, yeah, one who is well, going to see it. First of all, no, I will not go see Bad Boys. Um, I have not seen the third one. I can't stand Michael <laughs> Bay movies um, in general, so I'm probably going to stay away from it. Deadpool and Wolverine, hell yes, I'm going to see this. <laughs> I don't really watch anything else that Ryan Reynolds is in, so yeah. I haven't had this problem outside of, like, what is it, the the uh, the rom-com with Sandra Bullock? I can't remember the name of that movie. I like that. It's um, great. The, it's so no, good. The, the, the Proposal. Bond? The proposal. the proposal it's so great betty white's yeah. in it that movie that movie rules um mm -hmm. i i love that movie that's where i was like okay this is kind of fell in love with that guy even though van wilder was probably most of our no pun intended here uh exposure to him because there's lots of exposing of things in that movie well, but, do, you remember, do you remember like two guys a girl in a pizza place of course yeah yes yeah 90s. that's like way yeah. way, way back yeah way, um but it's but it's one of those things where i 
I love both of these characters. I thought Ryan Reynolds is Deadpool. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is that he's Deadpool in all of his movies. Yes. So if you watch all of his stuff, it ends up being, it's, it's kind of like the rock or you can even take Adam, Adam Sandler, if you want to, they're Mm -hmm. always kind of the same versions of those things where people were like, I remember the reviews came out for black Adam and they're like the rock in his most transformative role was like, all he is is quiet. I think, yeah, I think Adam Sandler actually, I think he can really act. He has great range. Spanglish, um, Punch Drunk Love, Spanglish. But he's not doing any of that anymore. He got the Netflix 10 film deal or whatever and was like, yeah, uncut gems. He's like, I like on a bike. Uncut gems, yes. Uncut gems, so good. He can really act. Yeah. I think he just likes to like, take vacations and make movies with his friends with his friends yeah, yeah. Well, which i'm not mad right. which i'm not totally but no he can act, he's he can really yeah. really act uh, sure. and i feel like ryan reynolds has that in him in him yeah because well, he's drawn some emotional stuff out yeah. um it's just he always does the thing where he'll deadpan it at the end of it to kill it to make it a mm-hmm. funny moment where it's like i'm feeling really bad and he'll be like and i ran out of cocaine yeah and it's just like all right allergic to sincerity yeah 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. but i think for deadpool that works and i'm excited to see his interaction he and hugh jackman have such good chemistry together (laughs) that i don't i almost don't care i just (laughs) want to see those two together i I think it's going to be hilarious i think it'll be fun i i can't wait to see what they're able to do because it's in the disney universe now it's in the mcu so I kind of can't wait to see what terrible things happen because just in the trailer where he's like, well, we can't when, when uh, I can't remember his blind neighbor asks him if he has any cocaine, he's like, I can't say cocaine or <laughs> uh, what about, what about this? What about that? He's like, do you want to build a snowman? Like, yes, but I can't. <laughs> I just like alluding to all these things. Tyler, this is the wrestling tie, and it reminds me of the Degeneration X promo where they get up and read the thing, the the list of things the network said they're not allowed to say, <laughs> yes. and they just bleep it out. I feel like that's what's going to happen in this movie. Oh, I kind of like it was a hard R, right? Like the it's first. a hard R. Yeah. yeah, they were like, no, Deadpool is Deadpool. We're not going to change it. But they're, <laughs> but but they're um in the t- in the trailer you see this giant Ant Man. <laughs> um blown up like he's huge but there's a skeleton inside of it like he clearly died in this universe and uh in one of the the new clips he goes huh paul rudd finally aged and then they go into it so like that they're acknowledging all of this stuff i can't wait for it i think Aww. it's gonna be just a lot of fun in the theater uh yeah. that one my experience with the first deadpool in the theater was so positive that mm-hmm. i know the same kind of freaky weirdos are going to show up with with me and oh, yeah. it's just going to be a good time. For sure. Bef- I, I don't know if a lot of Endgame people are showing up, but we'll see. Mm. Oh, mm. Do you remember when he was like Green Lantern and that was oh, really bad? Oh, so bad. That's, that why, but that's why I love Deadpool. They make mm. fun of Green Lantern. When he's, <laughs> when he's heading into the back for his experiments, he's like, just don't give me a green suit or animated. And then he goes in for his surgery <laughs> or whatever. And he was an oh. X-Men Origins Wolverine, which was also terrible. Oh, and- yeah. And he played Deadpool in that movie. That's so funny. That's but it hilarious. Was not Deadpool. Yeah. So I'm I'm here for it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, okay. Emily, thank you so much for joining us. Mm-hmm. How can we follow your work and support female driven? Oh, yes. You can find us on Instagram at female driven podcast. And then you can also find the podcast itself on um, Apple or Spotify. Again, it's just called Female Driven. So excellent. Hope it was great having you. We hope you all uh, not only have a great start to your summer, but see these films, support these films. Let us know what you think as you're consuming them. You can find us at GIPod19, and we will see you on the next episode. Gimmick Infringement is a part of 19 Media Group. You can listen to us on Apple, Spotify, iHeartRadio, or wherever you find podcasts. You can also find us on YouTube via the 19 Media Group channel. Please like, subscribe, comment, and share. Thank you.